One of the hottest topics this election season is transportation. And of course, that's always a topic we care about, especially when we're waiting in morning or afternoon traffic. Today, I have one of the state's top transportation experts, and actually, he's an, a consultant to many places around the world, including his hometown of Greece. I'd like to welcome Panos Prevodoros. Hi, Valia. Hello, welcome back to the show. Thank you, pleasure yeah. to be here. Well, you've been very busy, because not only are you teaching at the University right. of Hawaii, in the engineering department, but yep. you're also assisting uh, former Governor Cayetano mm -hmm. on his mayoral campaign in terms of helping him with his planning for That's transportation right. in case he gets elected, which he has a very good chance of doing, as we I know. Think so. so tell us about, he just unveiled a proposal to improve traffic, and it's, uh, it's a counter to the rail plan that right. Kirk Caldwell has. And tell us about this plan. Yeah, he calls it uh, FAST. Uh, stands for fast, affordable, smart transportation. Of course, it's a plan. It's not a you know a proposal to FTA or anybody else for funding. But once uh, Ben gets elected, then immediately that goes on the front burner and becomes you know uh, something we want to pursue and get funding and get it done. Uh, oh, this plan actually we've been uh, cooking it for a long time. In fact, it contains some components that they date back to uh, 20 years. Uh, for various political reasons, they were not pursued because, you know, in general, uh, there are a lot of projects on the front burner, on the back burner. An example of that is, for example, the, the Dillingham Boulevard Contraflow that uh, I did a city and state project back in uh, 1991. Uh, we simulated it and it proved to be a positive thing. So you have an extra lane coming to town, to town on Dillingham and in the afternoon you reverse it like we do on Capulani. But for political reasons, the, the council people who were involved, uh, they had some kind of disagreement. And without political support, uh, simple projects like this uh, die off. And then the project managers went away and nobody else pursued it. And this is simply you know, a very good project that uh, should have been done 20 years ago. But now it's on the table. That's great. Now, now of course, the big components of, uh, of Ben's plan is uh, transit and traffic. Now let's take the transit part, and that one is bifurcated in express buses and BRT, uh, different things. Express buses, the way we envision it, is that we want to provide service on distinct communities. Wahiawa, Mililani, Kapolei, Nanakuli. What does that mean? It means that a bus uh, makes a number of uh, stops, depending on the size of the community, five stops to 12 maximum, fills up, and then uses the zipper lanes on the freeway to get to downtown UH or Waikiki Express, which means on the zipper lane, the speed hardly ever drops below 45 miles an hour. So a trip from Kapolei to, to downtown will be something in the order of 45 minutes, very comparable to the automobile. And that's how actually you get to incentivize people to start using public transit because it's reliable and it takes you where you want to go uh, almost door to door. Uh, in comparison, the disadvantage of rail, which is of course reliable as long as it's on the guideway, the possibility of accidents and all is very slow, small, but nobody lives at the station or even next to the station. In fact, you don't want to live next to the station because the stations become, you know, uh, drug circulation and other types of uh, magnets. Uh, so, but even if you are next to the station, you still have to walk there, transfer weight and all. All these things, for example, if you have a trip from Eva Beach, it'll take a bus to take you to Kapolei, up with the, the bus station, actually the train station is two miles outside Kapolei, take the train, go to downtown, and then if you are far from downtown, you may want to take a taxi, long walk, or find another means, another bus line to take you to your destination. These are not convenient trips. The bus can take you nearly door to door. And of course, uh, we're not the ones to claim it. Nationally, there are reports ranking the bus as the number one service in the nation. Who in their right mind will go and chop 24 routes, which is the, which is the plan for the bus? 24 routes will be either completely eliminated or immediately terminated to the nearest rail station. That's so, amazing. So 24 existing bus routes yeah, that's that right. we have now will be terminated in order yeah. to have the rail. So you remember in July, August, we had all this uh, uh, brouhaha, but uh, you know, real world brouhaha. P people were upset because their bus was not doing the thing that they were expecting it to do because they were counting on it. And it was just two, three routes 
marginal changes, and maybe one route on the North Shore somewhat deleted or you know uh, spaced out. Four or five routes, twenty-four routes. It's in the FEIS, so it's not a it's not a fear mongering or just telling bad news to people. It's the plan. So it's it's going to be quite remarkable for people who are already upset about these few bus changes to suddenly have yeah, it's, 24 changes to right. these routes. It's going to be very confusing. Right. And, and, and remember now, if you are, you know, uh, issues, you have issues with age, issues with weight, issues with health. And, you know, you take a bus from Ever Beach, you sit on the seat. Well, it takes a while, but eventually it will take you to downtown or where you're going. Now, it'll take you to the Croc Center. You have to get out of the bus, walk, take an elevator, stand at the rail station, two minutes, five minutes, depending whether it's peak off peak, wait for the train, walk into the train, find a seat, travel to downtown, then reverse escalators, get out of town and start walking. For many people, this is very inconvenient. That's why if you look at the literature, they call this the 15% penalty, which means that every time you transfer and wait, you take these times, but you multiply, you add on top of it another 15%, then you make your times comparable to the car and all, and then you see, so if the alternative mode it has travel time like this and car is like this, guess what? People will carpool or use the car because the differential is simply too big. Same thing if the rail is here and the bus is here, bus is more advantageous. That's what we're gonna be doing and that is not good. That is not what FAST is doing. FAST is nearly door to door. Bottom line today, less than 3% of our bus trips are done on express buses. When the rail comes in, that's what the study says, this 3% is gonna to drop to half a percent. Basically, the express buses, bye-bye. We wanna take this 3% and, and put it over 5%, nearly double it within the means of the budget of the city, so we have much more express buses. Uh, this will take, uh, will be very convenient for a lot of students at the QH, uh, recall that the rail is not going to ever come to the UH. Not in my lifetime. It's not even in the books. I mean, they threw it as a political bone out there, but there is no substance behind it. There is no design, preliminary engineering, funding, or approvals. That's going to begin, perhaps, in 15 years. And by the time there is any UH train, forget about it. I mean, Anne Kobayashi went to Hart and asked them, if we want the train to go to Kapolei, and to go to the UH, like originally said, how much? Comes back the letter from Hart. 9.03 billion. Not on top, but the 5 billion becomes 9 billion just to go through Kapolei and arrive at the UH. I mean, what are we talking about? Well, you know, originally um, when I think Mufi Hanneman started this project, when he was he was conceiving it, it was going to be what a three a million dollars. I mean, three billion dollars. Three point six. And that, three point six billion. And that was for the entire route to downtown. Right. And Waikiki. Letter to right. the editor. I still have it. I should have framed it because you know this is the basis on which everything was built. And we we all voted on the basis of that. A little bit more, because mm -hmm. by the time we voted, they said, whoa, the 34, million, 34 miles, too much. We voted on the minimum operating segment, which at the time was, you know, a little candy. Oh, yeah, we'll do the peak project, but we call this the MOS. Within a year, nobody else was talking about the MOS. The 20 mile, this is it. So Outside the price has gone later, way, way up. Way, 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 and, and the project uh, is small, uh, and right. nobody's talking about, you know, uh, calls it minimum anymore. This is it, guys. I mean, 5.16 billion for outside two miles out of Kapolei to Alamoana Center and Finito. And now we have, of course, the <laughs> the EV issue. My goodness, I mean, the every native day, Hawaiian burials. Every day, right. my, yeah. I mean, it's and and I don't know what they are doing because I can tell you what they are doing is not correct. Uh, now let's let's back up for people that might not be following this issue. There's yeah. a Hawaii Supreme Court ruling Go with ahead. Paulette Kalikini, right. which uh, who she brought it to the Hawaii Supreme Court mm -hmm. with the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation, and the Hawaii Supreme Court ruled in her favor and reversed a lower court, court ruling That's and right. said that the city can't divide up the project into four parts and just do the archaeological surveys on each one because you can't exactly ch change this train right. like this because it's, the, it's, whole it's the whole project. So they made the city stop the construction. That's right. And then they have to do the entire route, 20 mm -hmm. miles, and investigate all the archaeological sites and find any bones that could be buried there from right. Native Hawaiians, right. which are, close, of course, called Eevee. Yeah. So, um, so now you're saying that uh, now they're finding these Eevee in right. the rail route. 
But you know what I observed there? Mm -hmm. Because I watch television and I have been uh, driving in Kakako. They're digging pukas. The pukas correspond to the columns that they're gonna come down. So far, so good. But the pukas, they look to me like smaller than 10 by 10. 10 by 10 is only the column. The foundation underneath will be over 20 by 20. Mm. Why are they not doing that? I don't know what's going on, Malia. I mean, I, I can only ask questions at this point, and I really don't have time to go deal with these guys at heart. They're, they're basically clueless, so they're winging it. Anytime you ask them, I mean, Grabowskis goes and testifies, or even his uh, chief uh, economics officer, and people ask her a question, and she doesn't know about the, the contingencies. And what does it mean that 90% of the contingencies are allocated? Uh, do we have contingencies or already have been spent for something that you are not telling us? I'm not sure, she says. This is the chief financial officer of Heart. She, she doesn't know what these definitions are for the amounts. Anyhow, this, it's kind of like crazy. watching that that old American uh, gag, um, "Who's on first? Who's on first? That's right. Yes. Who's, yeah, that's right. And they play the musical chairs with with our money, and these are billions now. Bottom line, going back to the EV, I mean, essentially, they need to excavate the entire Queen Street, Street and Halekau Villa. It's an untenable position for these guys. I mean, it's a lose lose. We've been saying that from 2006. Such a monstrosity through town, it's a lose-lose for everybody, for the neighborhood, for the taxpayer, for the service. And you know, even if it comes, it'll come 15 to 20 years down the road at such a heavy price, and the toll is gonna take on construction and inconvenience, and it is really not worth it even if it was golden. So now, so, Governor, I mean, so Governor Cayetano, who's of course running for mayor against Kirk Caldwell, the main issue is, Governor Cayetano, he's been on the show. He right. wants to not do the rail project at all. That's right. And Kirk Caldwell wants to do the rail project. Mm -hmm. And But not only is that the important issue, but there's also Governor Cayetano saying, look, there's all these other things we can do to improve traffic. That's and correct. some of them were um, synchronizing lights, and you can go over that. That's right. Besides the BRT buses. So what are some of the other things? You have underpasses and so on. Well, um, the big ones, the immediate one is trying to get a good handle on our traffic lights. Uh, to their credit, the few engineers that are there have been trying hard to do the traffic signals. However, we need a dozen of them, not four, because we simply have 800 traffic lights, traffic signalized intersections, so they have multiple lights around them. So we need to find uh, the qualified warm bodies engineers, electrical and civil and traffic engineers to get a handle on those. Good. So every year we plan to optimize traffic lights in batches of 100 to 150. So within four years, we would have done the entire core and only outline traffic lights will be, you know, So it takes 40 years to do that? Four. Oh, four, four. I was gonna say, wow. 150 uh -huh. uh, per year, so four times 150 makes Got it. 600. Okay. So 600 out of 800 can be done reasonably uh, within four years. So now, now, people that don't know what optimizing a light is, what does that mean? Well, the simple definition is that you drive down Britannia King Street or King Street, and for a full minute or more, you keep getting green lights even when the traffic is thick but not bumper to bumper. So for over 90% of the time, you can go from the UH past Ward Avenue in one shot. This is totally impossible today. You have to stop at least three times. And three times, it means three extra minutes for a very short two, three minute trip. That's what we're talking about. A and the cost benefits of this are humongous. Uh, people, if they wanna go on the web, they'll see the Federal Highway says that basically if you spend a dollar on traffic lights, you can get up to $40 in benefits. Travel time, pollution, and gasoline that you didn't have to spend by idling the car and starting and all these maneuvers. The other thing we're gonna do is that, and we wanna help also East Honolulu, is that a major thoroughfare parallel to the university is Kapiolani, because then at the convention center, Kapiolani splits in two, right. straight to town and down Atkinson to go Ala Moana Boulevard. But upstream of that, a lot of bottlenecks. Three traffic lights are bottlenecks. Dade Street, Macaulay, and Kalakaua. In all three of them are gonna have one lane underpass per direction. Those are very short, about 800 feet. They are not tunnels, they are cut and cover. And uh, basically that single lane, because it has 100% green time, is the equivalent of three lanes at the surface. So the bottleneck goes away. 
and it's a win-win situation because you save a little bit of green and you give it to the other directions. You have less conflicts for accidents, etc. So these underpasses actually at the UH in 2006, we got a prestigious national award for simulating them, showing them. Uh, Seoul has been building them by the dozen, so there are very many cities that they have them. It's uh, well established. Now, some people say, well, uh, Carl, well, that this will have debilitating congestion. How can he dare talk? I mean, we propose five underpasses, five intersections. The rail is going to disturb over 100 intersections. So what is he talking about? And we plan to close them one at a time, four months in the summer. Remember that California, interstate freeways, they replaced massive overpasses in one weekend. And we cannot do an 800 feet underpass, two lanes in four months. Uh, it's not easy. It takes a lot of several months of pre-planning. But if you accommodate for everything and you're prepared, you can put it on the road in four months. So the inconvenience will be actually minimized. So people will be able to go under the road and keep going straight and not stop at the lights. Not stop at the light. Yep, and, and that'll make traffic flow a lot faster. Yes. And if you're claustrophobic, if your vehicle is over height, et cetera, we're always gonna have a minimum of two surface lanes. So there is no problem. If in, the, in worst case, that thing floods. We have a major storm, it's gonna have pumps. But in a major storm, the, the pumps may not be enough. So once in a very long time, it may flash a red light, which means it's closed. But there is going to be a minimum of two to three surface lanes, so it's going to be inconvenient in rare situations, but not a calamity. So people that might say, Panos, do you know what you're talking about? You know, how did you get? So tell them, tell them about your two recent successes. Um, well, at least two the most recent success, which uh, my son thanks you for every morning, which is the freeway that has oh, yes, four lanes. Right. Talk it's, about that. I, well, that, that's a very old success, but it's, you know, t time is different in Hawaii. You produce a solution in 2003, and then nine years <laughs> later, <laughs> nine years later, because you, you said recent, <laughs> of course. I, I was done with it in 2003. You mean you, done, you, was, per, you prepared the plan yeah, they, in 2003? Yeah, the, the state paid us at the U.S. in the traffic lab to do the analysis. They got the recommendations, and then they, uh, well, they were busy or they sat on it, whatever, whichever way you want to frame it. But then to their credit, they did some work and they hired, you know, uh, we are not designed to produce final design documents. So they hired one of the local companies. They did a fine job, then a contractor. And almost overnight, uh, a central portion of the freeway went from three lanes to four lanes. And uh, uh, now where is this from? Just so uh, people this know. is from Punahou to Pali. Yeah. Both ways from uh, Punahou Street to Pali Highway. So all of a sudden, that major choker of three lanes because a lot of people come in from the schools, et cetera, and from the other side, Vineyard Boulevard, exiting at Puneho, uh, we have an extra lane. Uh, it really made the off-peak capacity, I mean, it's a breeze. Uh, Saturday, there is no more congestion, which, which is a clear indicator that you really added capacity. In the mornings and all, there is weaving there, too many parents taking the kids to Puneho, but so there are still issues, but everything has improved by at least 20 to 30% for what people might call a paint job. Right. Uh, which stayed on the shelf for roughly nine years to completion. So basically you took the um, the sides of the freeway that were open already and turned the whole thing from three lanes into four. Four lanes. And it's just made it go a lot faster. That's right. I mean, we, we see that it saves us so much it time. Saves, yeah. And it's such a simple solution yeah. in, in theory. And we put two more in the books and uh, to their credit, actually uh, Governor Lingle wanted to build them. Uh, Dr. Brel Morioka was the director of the DOT and he put them into his... Uh, highways modernization plan. And then 2008 happened, you know, summer 2008, the economy collapsed. So they were looking on furlough Fridays instead of, you know, building roads. So those projects, you know, mm -hmm. wow, uh, nothing happened to them. Although they were actually printed on the Star, actually the Honolulu advertiser at the time that they are a go. Uh, now, Neil Abercrombie uh, is doing Middle Street and the PM Zipper. Uh, I believe they have not gone out to bid, but they are ready to go to bid and they will. Uh, what is one of them adding a lane at Middle Street? Middle Street is a nightmare. It will remain a nightmare forever because it's what we call a bathtub design. If you see on the sides of Middle Street, there are 30 foot, 30 foot concrete retaining walls. You cannot move those, uh, those things. I mean, to move them, you will have to close Middle Street for a year. So forget it, nobody will accept that. But we can take the fourth lane that comes through Middle Street the real choker is the overpass at Kalihi Street because only three lanes go under it. We can widen it without busting the overpass into four lanes. 
and that immediately adds 30% capacity. It's not a full solution, but it is 30% better for $90 million. So I'm glad that they are doing it. That's great, yeah. Yes. The other thing I wanna bring up is that today, Country Express C, it's, the, it's, it's a BRT actually, that uh, the city is operating. It's called the Country Express C. It goes from Capole to downtown in 45 minutes. If you wanna do this, let's say if we today had the rail and we wanted to do this, it will take 55 minutes. Uh, so the rail is not even competitive. The problem with Country Express C is that you can do this in the morning, but in the afternoon there is no PM zipper. So that the, the bus is in the bumper to bumper traffic. So in the afternoon, 75 minutes, not good, not as competitive. Now the other project we propose, we analyze and it's going to work is the PM zipper. This is going out to bid. I believe the rough price is $150 million. The final price will come in when you open the tenders and see what people you know, offer to build it for. But it's roughly 150 million project. What we are talking all this time is that, you know, Middle Street, 90 million. PM zipper, 150 million, an underpass, $50 million. Yes, 50 million here, 50 million there is substantial money, but any way you add it, it never exceeds roughly $1 billion. Well, we can do a, such a huge benefit for a billion dollars instead of wasting $5 billion. And that's what FAST is all about, solving the problem at one-fifth the price. Now, one of the things Governor Cayetano mentioned in his presentation about FAST was a, the flyover, the Nimitz flyover. Right. So tell people about that. That's been in the works for a long time, and he can work yes. with Governor Neil Abercrombie to get that done. Absolutely. Now, this dates back to the time that he was governor. Yes. Uh, it, uh, it was a project that I put in the front burner when I ran for mayor in 2010, because at that time, President Obama was using the expression shovel ready. I said this is the only project we have right now, major infrastructure project in 2010, that is shovel ready because with my own eyes, I have seen the entire completed preliminary design and environmental impact statement done in 1998. At that time, because the financial conditions were not good, Governor Caetano, he was governor at the time, he decided to not sign the EIS and move the, the project forward in the funding stage to be built because if you look throughout the 90s and throughout his, the economic conditions were terrible. So it's essentially a mothball project that's come back to fruition because without it, we cannot really have express buses to town. They're bottlenecked on Nimitz Highway. 2.2 miles solves the problem. So uh, that's something that I'm very glad that, you know, he by himself, you know, uh, with not uh, just suggesting him and representing to him the advantages of it, and the cost effectiveness of it, he says that that's, that's a winner, so we have to do it. And the reason that he talks about the state quite a lot is because Nimitz Highway is a state property, so at a minimum he would need permission, but it also would be nice if uh, he would get a cost share from the state, because if we build it, for example, 50-50, it can be done in a very expeditious way because you don't have to go through the federal process. Environmental laws in Hawaii are very strong, so the project is very healthy. It has pretty much passed environmental approvals, although it doesn't have governor's signature. And then once Abercrombie signs on it, within four years, it can be done, and then it's gonna decrease the time from airport to downtown, even in bumper to bumper traffic, to less than six minutes. It's really a worthwhile project. And that basically is 150 million, or how much was that project? No, that's 600. That's 600 the, million. That's what the DOT says. This is the interesting thing, that uh, I believe it's overpriced. In 2009, uh, Dr. Bernard Morioka and his people at the DOT they put it on the table at 600 uh, million dollars, roughly 300 million per mile, which is, in my opinion, very very expensive. But in the fast project. We said we're not gonna try to argue now with the DOT that we're gonna lose a, use a lower price. So we just put the 600. Now, I immediately the other side came and says, oh, wait a minute, that's a 2008 estimate. It's too old, you have to upgrade it to today's money. Oh, no way, you cannot speak with both sides of your mouth because originally the rail was supposed to cost something in the area of 5.6 billion, now it's down to 5.2, because since China stopped overbuilding, steel and material prices have gone down. If they have gone down for rail, 
they have gone down for the Nimitz Viaduct. So that price is already an overestimate and quite reliable. So we're using it and that's the end of the story. And in fact, I'm writing an article to contradict when Yoshioka says, impossible to build it for 300 million a mile. Uh, are you kidding me? Uh, Tampa built 10 miles, 10 miles for 300 million and we cannot build one, number one. Second, it is a very similar overstructure like the rail. In fact, the load on top of cars and buses is way, way lighter than the train. Now, if I cannot build, let's say I'm doing it, if I cannot build as an engineer one mile at 300 million, how can he build 20 miles? 20 miles times 300 makes 6 billion. He only has five. So how is he gonna build his overstructure? Sometimes I think his engineering is very political. Yeah, well, we've seen that with the rail, I think. Yeah, that's right. Right, okay, well, any final thoughts and where can people find out more about this? We have about a minute and a half left in okay. the show. Okay, uh, well, the, there is good description of FAST, including detailed numbers of cost. Uh, the cost of it actually is 1.2 billion when, and with contingencies and finance charges is 1.5 billion. Uh, the website of uh, Ben, Ben Cayetano, is voteben2012.com and then they will see FAST there and it has the PowerPoint presentation, the cost figures, et cetera. And, and I personally believe, and you know, we have Sam Kalejo, we have Eric Takamura, we have a lot of engineers that some of them we cannot speak about, but very, very highly qualified people to make credible decisions as well as accountants and project managers. We're very confident that this is an extremely good alternative to the one basket and one solution rail. It's a gamut of, uh, of options and very flexible. And it's gonna help improve traffic around the state. Immediately. And, and around the island, not just That's on That's right, not, not, not couple one or side. one line. That's right. And basically, I mean, we have a brief second here to, to explain it, but the, the rail is not gonna improve traffic, right? Uh, that's hear, exactly right. I mean, we hear Kurt Caldwell saying it's going to improve it by 30%. Well, that, is, that is a total lie. I mean, he, he is using one example of comparing his train to the slow poke bus, and he goes out and tells people that the rail is going to improve uh, traffic by 30%. No, it's going to improve the slow poke back, uh, bus by 30%. But that's not traffic. 90% of us use cars, and all the freeways and arterials will be congested, and his FEIS that he did as city manager says that clearly. So you can't believe everything you hear in campaigns. Absolutely not. But uh, we are more on the side of the, you know, truth than they are far more. Yep. Okay, good. All right. Well, we'll have to have people check it out. Sure. And we'll have you back on the show, Panos. Thanks for always coming After on and explaining win. it to the people. <laughs> all right. Well, good luck uh, with everything. And we'll look forward to maybe having you as mayor someday after all this is over. Sure. Mayor Panos. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Malia Zimmerman with News Behind the News. Aloha.